we switching positions. Now you under my submission, like woo. My rules, big moves. Y'all heavy on the tweeting. I disappear a whole season, like woo. Who said they looking for me? I'ma make you wait for it. Spend a few racks on a shopping spree. Yeah, I'ma make you pay for it. Tell them give it to me when I want it, please. Wait till I not look for it. Count down for me. Five, four, three, two. I want. I'ma make you wait for it. On my time. Yeah, I'ma make you pay for it. Everything I say in this video is alleged. It is in my opinion and it is for entertainment purposes only. So scene three is taking place at the Executplex. This is a mini storage unit and office suites um, in Huntsville. And so Kiki and I mean have uh, storage units that they have placed some of their belongings in because they are moving. And so what you see is Kiki and I mean going through the storage unit, taking out some things that they need for to move into the, the new home that they've moved into. One thing I will say, and I mean, this is just a side note. If you move and you got all this extra stuff, please don't get storage units. Give it away. Turn it into Goodwill. I mean, do something. Sell it. Do a yard sale. Something. But do not pay storage units to house all this stuff. If you are not currently using it, you will not go back to a storage unit a few months later and all of a sudden need this stuff. You won't. So... Everything you need, take it to the new house. The things that you don't need, purge. Get rid of it and give it away. But do not pay for people to house this stuff because you've likely grown out of it and you'll never go back to it. It's no use for a lot of this stuff. That's just a side note. It's just a life lesson I've learned myself. So I thought I'd share. Okay, so they're at the storage unit. They're moving. They're picking out some things that she needs for the house. And then they have a conversation that I think is really relevant to families who have athletes in them, who are going to high school or who are in high school. This is an argument that a lot of people have. So I found that this section where they're talking about, I mean, making decisions based upon one kid in the household and not thinking about the rest of the family I'm telling y'all, I'll be going through this. So this resonated with me. It's a conversation that I feel that I have a lot. And when your man is from the South, they big on them sports and they can't get their mind focused on nothing else. And it's just, it's quite frustrating to try to always say, listen, it is other people to consider here. So I just thought that was something that resonated with me. If it resonates with you, drop me some comments and let me know. But I thought that was something that, I could relate to. But then she gets a call from Mel and Mel uh, asks her, where is she? And she wants to pop up and just check on her real quick. And so Mel comes up. She uh, she says hello to Kiki and I mean, and they basically are kind of starting to talk about what happened at the Scott's barbecue. Okay. So they start talking about what happened at the barbecue. And Mel was saying that, you know, it was, she wasn't really paying attention to what happened in the beginning. And that it's really rare for, you know, she's never seen Amin come out of character. And Amin is saying he ain't never had no problem with Maurice. Maurice and him been cool from day one, but Marceau, Marceau's a different type of character. You know, he says that Marceau's not cut from the same cloth. I disagree. I think they're both cut from the same cloth. I think they just wear the different hats. <laughs> I think they uh, have a lot more in common than people see. I think Maurice is a little bit more polished with his than Marceau. Marceau is definitely a gaslighter and he is in your face up front and always in the mix. And Maurice is kind of a stand back person, but they are one in, they are the same. They just present it differently in my opinion. So then Melody says that she had stayed after the party and they were talking about how much they liked Amin. And to everybody's shock, I'm sure, Amin's like, no, they don't. They don't like me. And then Kiki says, Tisha has never liked him and she's treated him horribly since they got together. Now, I find that completely odd. Why would she jump up hey, hugging him in his face at the barbecue, but not address Kiki if you don't like him? You shouldn't have said nothing to nobody. So everybody picking up that that was a moment that was, it was something off about that moment. It was fake and it was foul. 
it was foul on two different levels. We just didn't know that it was two different levels. She was being phony in the way she spoke to I Amin mean, and hopped up and hugged him. Then not to speak to Kiki. That's Tisha's messy. She is messy. So Mel asked, have they talked to them? And I found it strange that I mean said, I don't ever talk to him. I don't never talk to him. And I'm thinking, huh, that's why though. Why that's odd. So it's like, this is tension and rifts that have been going back quite some time. You know, there is a lot more to this story than we're hearing. For him to say he never talks to them, why is that? You know what I'm saying? Like, what is it that has kept them apart or has caused them not to speak to each other and their cousins? You know, the Scots act like they're thick as thieves, but Tisha and Kiki, this family has been in odds at odds since they come on this show. And they didn't even want her on the show. Melody brought her on the show. So it's a lot more to this story that we don't know. Now, Kiki says that, you know, the relationships run its course. It's time for them to move on. I mean, does not appear to believe her. When Tisha said it in her and Marceau's scene, Marceau didn't seem to believe Tisha either. I hope it's true in this case because I feel like Tisha and Kiki need to split and Kiki needs to grow her brand and get herself together separate from all of that. She does not need to be in any way attached to Tisha as she flourishes. She needs to do this on her own. She needs to build her up herself, build up her brand. She needs to grow on her own and they so they cannot take ownership or credit for any of that. She needs to let them go, do their thing, and she needs to do her own. At this point, I think if Kiki does that, Kiki's going to be better off because, in my opinion, a lot of people like Kiki. A lot of people like Kiki. And hopefully, this does not tarnish her reputation in such a way that she cannot recover from that. So then Melody was saying she thinks that, you know, she believes I mean would have stepped in and somebody had to drunk on, throw a drink on Kiki and that's what she saw happen at the barbecue. I don't see what Marceau did in that way. I don't see Marceau stepping up for Tisha to defend Tisha because Kiki threw a drink on her. Him bringing in the drugs, I see was a deflection. He wanted to deflect from what had happened and the topic that was being to the, he threw drugs out there to deflect from that and put all the negative attention on Kiki that that's my opinion so Melody at this point she does acknowledge now listen you threw a whole drink now I I I thought I've thrown drinks so she acknowledges when she threw the drink at the Fletcher's and talking about Kiki throwing a drink but she's also still trying to discern she knows why she threw the drink at the Fletcher's she did not see or hear enough transpire between Tisha and Kiki to warrant a drink being thrown. So she's still trying to get to why she threw the drink. I think Marceau's deflection about the drugs and bringing that in is top of her mind because she stayed at the barbecue after Kiki left and she heard a lot of that conversation. So that resonated with her. But I don't think she understood that it was clearly just a deflection. Throwing a drink on someone has nothing to do with being a drug addict. It just doesn't. And so, I mean, he, he corrects it. No, him trying to defend Tisha or take care of Tisha because she got a drink thrown on her was not his issue. It was the drug testing statement. And that's what, I mean, reacted. He reacted because he realized that's not appropriate. What the hell are you talking about drug test her? For what? For what? And he, he caught it. He caught that Marcel was deflecting and just trying to embarrass her and tear her down. That was the whole purpose of his statement because he needed to deflect from what they were talking about. And my question is, if everybody knows that what Marcel was talking about and Kiki was talking about was simply a rumor, why did Stormy act like she didn't know what was going on and what anybody was talking about at that moment? Why didn't her soul just say at that point, it's a rumor. I feel like they kept bleeping out what Kiki was saying, but was Kiki saying, how are you mad at me about a topic you told me to look into? Or was she saying something else? We don't know because they kept, they wouldn't play it. 
So you couldn't even hear the whole argument. You know, again, I don't care who Marceau sleeps with. I don't care because Tisha doesn't care. So it's it's a non-factor with me. But I think if Kiki's upset because Tisha told her to look into a situation and then she tried to tell her and she never responded, but now she's acting mad at her because she's doing what she asked her to do, I think that should have played out. And I think because production didn't tell the whole story, it all seemed confusing, confusing to people. It was, it was like, we never heard all that. That came out after the fact when a content creator, Anthony Lofties, did a whole interview with Kiki and she goes into what all this is about. That's when that came out. It was after the show. It, and you can go over there and take a look at that. It's a whole backstory to this. But the point is, why on earth would they not tell the reason Kiki was upset? They made it seem like it was some, one thing and it wasn't. So that creates a whole lot of confusion too. People who are not digging this deep into this show. You see what I'm saying? Most, a lot of people who watch the show ain't watching what happens on YouTube. So this is causing a lot of confusion and it will make, and in the end, depending on how production spins this, it may make it seem like Kiki was just starting shit, but she wasn't. On the back end, she wasn't, but will the, the majority of the public ever see that? So it makes me feel like, are they just setting her up? What are they doing? Like, are they trying to get her out the show? What's going on? And that's the feeling that I got towards the end of this episode. So then they flip back to the scene when Wanda was showcasing her potatoes and Marceau came to Kiki before. And she said, if you want me to tell it, I can tell it. And he said, do it and I'll burn this whole motherfucker down. And I mean, stepped up and started talking to him at that time. There are secrets in this family that people know about each other and they're holding each other's secrets. And that's fine. That happens in families. But what I don't like is they're always trying to shut her up, keep her quiet and tell her she cannot talk about certain things. Why do Marcel and Tisha get to control what people say? That's not fair. And that's why I think she should stay away from that. So Kiki does express remorse and she's saying that she wish she could tap into her psyche and she's in anger management. But they're just now getting to it and all that's cool. You know, I done been in anger management a couple of times. I still would have threw the drink. I ain't gonna lie. But so as she's working through her own issues again, I hope she keeps herself separate from these people. You know, she keeps them separate because whatever she do, I believe Tisha and Marceau is going to try to steal her shine. I really believe that. Kiki is expressing that she felt bad about what took place at the Scott's house, but but she does not have remorse for where her and Tisha are in their relationship. And then Melody told him, they was talking about it and they kind of joked about it. And she's like, well, that's not uncommon. And that's why it's hard for me to go there with her. Well, if it's not uncommon, I'm wondering why Kiki didn't believe Mel when she was sitting on the reunion stage last year and told him that he was laughing about it. Melody was telling the truth. He did laugh about it when they first told Mel and Martell that Kiki had a drug problem and they still laughing and they gonna continue to laugh. That's who they are. But hopefully it's sinking into Kiki's head that's who they are so that she will finally cut ties and separate. Family's family, I get it, but you don't necessarily have to interact and be up under your family like that all the time. Sometimes family members are the ones who will hurt you the most and you got to separate from them. She needs to separate from them. They shouldn't know what each other's doing. They shouldn't be in each other's mix. It should be an agreement that if we film together or if we have something to do as a cast, we will be cordial and that's that. I don't, I don't even think they have to go out of their way to even speak to each other. Just move in a room without causing chaos. So Mel tells her at the end of the day, she's proud of her progress and what she's been doing, but she also tells her that she thinks that she needs to put a stop to the rumors and she thinks she should take a drug test and she has one on her. And that's when, that blew my mind. I was angry about that. I felt conflicted about that. I was like, what the hell? It, you know what it feel like? <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, it felt like when you at a corporate job, it's a whole bunch of white folks and a few black people in the office, 
and the white manager comes up talking about they having random drug tests today. And then you go downstairs for the drug test and the only people lined up for the test is the black folks. That I don't like that feeling that someone's always, you know, managing and, and hovering like big brother over you and pee in a cup. That shit right there, I did not like it. But I know that that is not a reaction to I ha- that I have to Melody. And I, I had to step back and say, what is, what is going on here? That's why it took me so long to do this review. I had to think, what is going on? And as I took a step back and, and I thought about it, I'm thinking, listen, you have Tiffany sitting there stating that you don't need people around you that have nothing to lose. So we know her position on Kiki. You have Marceau and Tisha. We know her. Marceau and Tisha, Kimmy and, and uh, Maurice are going to have the same position. So that's five people against Kiki. Martel's going to go with the, the crew. And then you may have Stormy who takes Kiki's side because she did she just believe Kiki acted out. And you got Mel. And then you have the Fletchers who will likely side with the Scots because this is, uh, they have, and then hearing that whole conversation that they were allowed to have about Kiki without Kiki being there, it shapes people's opinion. So I'm thinking, okay, maybe what Mel is doing is trying to save Kiki's position on the show. Because if you're asking all these people, should Kiki leave from the show? They'll say yes, because she's on drugs. But if she takes this test, it is clean, they can't then say, oh, we got to kick her off the show because she threw a drink on Tisha because she's on drugs. You know what I'm saying? I think Melody is doing this to help save her position on the show, to clean up her reputation and to stop the conversation where it is. But that was another thing that I did not consider in my initial reaction is Mel brought Kiki on the show, (laughs) you know? And so she may be questioning her own decision-making. And in drug testing Kiki, she may be ensuring that she didn't bring her onto the show too soon or before she's capable of handling it. If Kiki is not clean, this show is too much. It's just going to drive her further and further into addiction because these people are not for her and they're going to antagonize her and keep coming at her because they don't want her on the show. If Kiki is clean and she's strong enough to handle this show, I think Kiki can thrive. I think a lot of people like Kiki. I think Kiki can actually grow into a very strong character on this show if she focuses on her, her story, her life, and building herself back up after addiction. I think she's not going to succeed on the show if she keeps trying to mend fences with Tisha and her mama. Like that's not what she should be spending her time doing. Sometimes when you grow, you can't take everybody with you and you have to do it on your own. You have to do it on your own. And I think it would be great for her to take on this new opportunity separate from Tisha. Yes, they're both on the same show, but they can move independently on this same show. They can do that. And Kiki can establish who she's cool with on the show and Tisha can have who she's cool with, and them Scots can do their thing. I feel like Melody has to ensure that Kiki is ready to handle this because she may feel a sense of responsibility because she brought her on it. She may want to make sure she's not putting her in a situation and it's too much for her to handle. So that was another side of probably her thought process in testing. She has to make sure she is not bringing her on the show too soon. My initial reaction. Initially, I was like, what the hell? No. And and so sometimes it took me a minute to get to where I'm at. That was not my initial reaction. I was so tore up about this whole <laughs> show. And I had to really break this down in three parts and separate it because I was I was furious. Like on Saturday, I could I was furious. I normally review these live on Sunday and I was just, uh, uh-uh, uh, I can't do it. I could not do it. And this, I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see how this all plays out. But at this point, I don't see the other castmates being receptive to her. So how is Kiki going to fit into the show? How does she, she stay on the show and thrive when 
this whole kind of question mark about her sobriety is in play. When this whole question mark about her addiction is in play. So as much as I didn't like Melody popping up with the drug test, I now, after thinking about it, I get it and I understand it. And I hope Kiki does it and I hope it's negative. But we know she's on methadone, so how does that work? Do you have a test on hand that can discern the difference between methadone and any other drugs? But if they can pull this off, if if production or whoever provided Melody with a test that could actually say without with at a hundred percent that she's not on drugs, then I would prefer Kiki take it because I want her name to be restored. And if she is clean, I think she should get credit for that. And I think people should stop dragging her name in the dirt like she's running around on crack because that's how people are treating her. And that is not the, that's not what is happening. And it's unfair. And I would like for her to be able to shut these people up and shut them down for good. So it took me a minute to get there. So if T Kiki's being asked to do something on the spot, I don't know if she would do it because in the moment, you have a lot of feelings and emotions that are going through your head. I'm interested to see how it turns out. What was y'all reaction when y'all first saw this? What Did you agree with it? Did you think, you know, what the hell? Like, what was your reaction when you first saw this? And now what is your reaction in retrospect? After having a few days to think about it, after all the things that we've heard that have come out on the internet since the airing of the show, what do you think now? Please drop me some comments, like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell so that you are made aware every single time that I post, and I will talk to you guys soon. Get out the way, who got a watch, who got the time, I'm raising the clock, even if my feelings grind don't stop, got big dreams.